Welcome to the Virtual Ventures Podcast, episode 21. I'm your host, Andres Sanchez, and today our guest is Jay Yang, a remarkable 17-year-old entrepreneur. He is the founder of Nerd Newsletter with over 500 subscribers and a growth intern at Beehive. Get ready to be inspired by Jay's journey as we explore entrepreneurship, tech, and more. Please help us continue to book amazing guests like Jay by doing something as simple as liking, commenting, and subscribing to our show. Thank you so much for continuing to listen. How we doing, Jay? Nice to see you, man. Doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. For sure. I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I know we've talked about it before, but you get the award for the youngest and most successful guest that we've had on the show. So that's really exciting for me. Um, You've been absolutely crushing it. I mean, there's a reason I found you. You just kept popping up on my page. And finally, I clicked in and saw what you were doing, what you had accomplished. And I knew that I had to get you on the show. I think you're going to resonate really well with the audience and everybody's going to be super interested in what you have to offer and what you've already accomplished. Um, For anybody listening now, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff to help the show keep growing so I can keep booking amazing guests like Jay. Um, And Jay, if you've listened to the show, um, you know, we go right into things. So who is Jay Yang? What have you accomplished already? Where are you at in your life? Give the people listening a little view in. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm Jay, a uh, rising senior in high school, 17. Um, and for the past two years, I've been obsessed with this creator space and building my creator business to six figures. Um, aside from that, right now, I'm a growth intern at Beehive. Um, just got into this newsletter space. Um, I see social media kind of as a hierarchy of first you kind of master social media and then you go to the next level of newsletters and then it just keeps stacking from there um so i'm just thinking about what's the next step for sure what made you obsessed with this creator space i mean you said over the last two three years it means you were 15 16 17 like getting into this like what was the catalyst for you getting obsessed yeah for sure so it started during COVID, like I, th- I know many people's journey started during COVID, yeah. I Googled um, how to make money online. Um, and one of my friends uh, had a YouTube channel at the time. And so I was like, hey, you know, that's something that I could do. So I actually started on YouTube. I had a music promotion channel um, called Inspired Smiles. And what I would do is basically publish other like underground underrated artists music on my channel to help promote them, send traffic their way. Um, And so I did that during the summer of COVID. And you know, it was doing all right. But you know, obviously not a ton of growth. Um, But then I posted this motivational song um, on YouTube, and it absolutely blew up like it got a million plus views shot up my channel like I was on the moon. Um, but I was scrolling through the comments one time and there was tons of comments and it was like, you know, this song, you know, inspired me to get out of bed or, you know, this song, I, I work out to this song or, you know, I lost 20 pounds when I run with this song. And it's like, cause you know, during COVID, uh, a lot of people were down, depressed, lonely. And, and that's kind of when I realized two things. One, a lot of people need inspiration and encouragement. Uh, but two, I could be that person that inspires people, right? Little old me, 15 year old in his bedroom, making a difference, like a positive impact on the world. Um, and so I started an Instagram page called Jang Inspires. Um, and I started posting inspirational quotes, um, that kind of thing. Like, uh, I think my first post was today is a great day to be grateful or something like that. Just, you know, uh, kind of cheesy, but, um, positive encouragements. And it kind of snowballed from there where I got into personal development, self-help books, fitness, got started marketing, writing, storytelling. And so it kind of evolved through there. Um, But the reason why I'm obsessed with being like a creator or like online entrepreneur is because to grow your social social media or your business, it's all about adding value to the world, right? The more value, the more value you give, the more valuable you become. And so I, I think that's like one of the highest pursuits you can do is improve yourself and invite others along the journey. Dude, that was so powerful. Let's go all the way back to the front because there's a ton to unpack in that in that re- response there. So, how are you so mature at 15, 16 years old like to 
be able to identify like the impact you were making with that page and then parlay that into what was going to be your next um, kind of journey into this creator space. Like that's not that's not like what the typical 15, 16 year olds doing with their spare time. So when did you realize that you were really mature like that and you had a skill that you needed to show the world? Yeah, well, my parents always used to say I'm a, a old soul in a young man's body. Like <laughs> I, I just I like to think deeply about things like, um, you know, every night before bed, I'm just like for an hour, I'll just lay there and just like review like what happened this past day. You know, what did I do well? What did I do not so well? What can I improve on? It's just I guess that's just who I am. Um, but I think maturity comes from both length of experience, but also depth of experience. And so like, while it's only been two years on my online creator entrepreneur journey, it's like, I truly believe we live life, not just in length, but also depth. And I feel like I've lived really deeply and just experienced and learned a ton of different things during these two years. Like I was just getting my hands on everything, just trying to learn everything about everything. And, and so that's kind of what I attribute to it. Yeah, man, I feel like you're just at the perfect age. Like I remember, I mean, I'm 24 now. Um, I remember when I was 15, 16, 17 years old and you have so much energy and it's like when you get obsessed with something, you need to uncover more, you need to dig deep, you need to learn every little piece about it and you have the energy for it. Not to say that I don't have the energy to do the homework and the good stuff now, but I remember when I was your age and man, I... I at 24 feel so ahead of the game. I can only imagine the way that you feel and like the person you will be at my age. Like this show is going to still be around. So I'm going to make sure to get you back on the show multiple times. But I want to get you back on the show when you're my age, just to be able to highlight all of the amazing things that you're going to end up doing, because it's so impressive what you've already accomplished. And I know that that means that you are going to just continue to skyrocket forward. And I think that's a great time to highlight dude, this beehive internship, that's awesome. Like I know internships are a huge part about the end of high school, college journey. You got to go get an internship at a new growing company that's really aligned with where your interests are. Talk about that experience. Yeah, for sure. So I guess it started about a year ago when my friend Abby um, interned at beehive last summer. And I saw that and I was just, I saw the whole process and I was like, man, that's super cool. And so actually like I wanted to intern at Beehive during the fall, um, but I was like, I gotta wait till the summer when I have more time, right? School, sports, you know, kind of busy. Um, so yeah, I waited six months, obviously did a ton of research about Beehive. Like before um, the internship, uh, the interview process, I listened to 50 plus hours of podcasts about newsletters, about Beehive, about Tyler Dank, the CEO. And I just obsessed over it. And I truly believe like if you wanna learn something, one of the best ways to do it is just curate a you know research playlist go on a bunch of long walks and, and take rigorous notes and i think beehives in the perfect position to both you know me mutually help them but then also learn a lot about the startup space what it means to, to transition from seed series to series a and what even is a startup right what does a product manager do all these like little questions that, um, that I didn't understand before. Yeah, that's awesome, man. When I saw that you were doing, I just started a Beehive newsletter like two and a half weeks ago, 22 subscribers, let's go. Um, and I thought it was super cool. Like I think Beehive is a really cool company. I like their UI. Like I like the way they present the newsletter um, offer to people like myself new in the space. So I think it's super cool that they're giving you the opportunity to jump in. I know I get a lot of listeners who are in college or trying to figure out what they're going to do. And I'm always an advocate for making sure that you align yourself with something you're actually interested in. I think it's a waste of time if you go and do something that you're not super passionate or excited about, especially if you're not getting paid because you're not going to commit yourself to what you're actually doing. Like you're not going to go get the most out of it, which I think is really important. Um, so it's super cool that you were just able to lock this in some in a space that you're really passionate about that you're creating in right now. When does that internship start and what do you think it's going to look like? Yeah, uh, I started working for Beehive, I guess, two, two to three weeks now. Um, and so it's just during the summer before school starts. Nice. And what are you doing for them? Yeah, so I'm a growth intern at Beehive. 
um, and I know that's very vague, but growth for a SaaS startup really means two things. It's it's one, how do we get more customers uh, or users, and two, how do we uh, reduce churn rate, right? So that's kind of growth. And so the projects I'm working on is helping increase brand awareness about Beehive, but also how do we best uh, communicate to users so they better understand, unlock, and can maximize all the powerful features that Beehive has to offer. That's awesome. I, I gotta, I gotta see if I could book a masterclass with you to make sure I'm actually doing everything right and maximizing my newsletter to, to continue to grow it because I'm really excited. I've never traditionally been a writer, but it's something that I would do want to improve. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to get my hands dirty in this newsletter space. Um, I was doing some research on you and I was looking through your followers on Twitter, people that follow you. And I see a lot of impressive names. I see a lot of my previous guests, a lot of my upcoming guests, and then a lot of my like dream guests and individuals on there. How did you go about acquiring this amazing network at such a young age? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, the honest answer would be it was all kind of natural and organic. Uh, I've done a lot of research on how do you like build a network because that's just something that I think is valuable to everybody. And it's a combination of uh, proximity and time. So it obviously helps that I'm a young person, 17, like people want to help younger people. And that's a huge value add. Um, but you can kind of see it as uh, if you're trying to get a girlfriend, right? So if, if you want to get a girlfriend, what do you do? You, you, you get close to her and you just be near her, right? You just talk to her a lot. So proximity. Um, and then it's time, right? So the more you hang out, the more comfortable you get around each other. And so that's the same way with online. It's proximity times time. And so what I do with some people is say, I want to build a connection with someone with a larger following, right? What I would do is I would probably scroll their profile and I would say, all right, what are their interests? What do they talk about? Um, and I put them in a curated Twitter list and maybe I engage with them every day. Um, and then I would just send them cool things. So uh, for example, uh, Danny Miranda, podcaster, um, and yep. this just pops in my mind is, um, I know he's super into meditation. I've been listening to his podcast for like the past two years. And, um, so I know a lot about his interests, what he likes, you know, what he's doing. And so when I scroll the internet, browse YouTube, whatever, and I find things about meditation or tips on how to be a better podcaster, I'll just send them to him, you know, just shoot him a DM. Hey, you know, I found this, here's a few notes I took from this, you know, video, thought you'd like it, you know, no worries if not. Right. And so it's just about finding ways to add value to people. And it's the same way with creating content. Uh, you're not really creating content. You're just creating relationships at scale. And I think that's what David Center, the founder of podcast said. Dude, you're really impressive, man. Like I've interviewed some amazing people and you're just level of detail that you go and approach all of these different things with and just your your wisdom when it comes to the different ways to approach things is just so impressive and and i'm not trying to make this like a fangirl podcast here but dude you're crushing it and like keep crushing it i know i, I follow danny a lot and he's been an amazing inspiration for this podcast um i've watched a lot of his stuff so when i saw that you guys were following each other i was like that's pretty cool is that a goal of yours to get on his podcast is that something that's already in the works um because i think that would be amazing yeah, um, I never really had a goal of like being on a particular podcast. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a goal to become the type of person that attracts people who want to, you know, interview you. So obviously, this is an honor to that you would want to talk with me. So I appreciate you. For sure, man. No, it's I was super excited when I saw that you were interested in being a guest. I hadn't really got to interview somebody younger. I had more traditionally people in their late 20s, mid 30s. And I'm like really passionate about helping the younger community. I played sports all my life. I've founded a few companies in college and I had such an amazing time. And I always wanted to kind of give back. And then I was able to parlay that into an amazing job at a huge tech company um, and a really special program. So I've always wanted to give back. And I just had been struggling to hit like the younger audience that I actually want to work with. So when I saw when I came across your page, I was like, man, this would be perfect. Like what an amazing person who like owns that audience to come in and tell their story. Um, 
So I, th- I think this is a good time to, to drop some value for any of that audience listening right now. I mean, you're 17, you've been uber successful so far. It's not going to stop here. What are some tips and tricks and advice that you could give anybody listening right now that's a rising senior or early in college looking to kind of get their life on track or get their career on track? Yeah. Um, I've thought about that question a lot. Like, what would I say to my past self or, you know, what would I say to like a younger cousin? Um, but I think it kind of boils down to doing great work and hanging around smart people. Um, and Paul Graham just released an essay about doing great work, but you know, it's very broad, but, uh, doing great work starts with one being curious about something, right? What are you most, what are you more curious about than the average person? And so for me early on in my journey, it was how do I craft a compelling message that, you know, inspires and impacts people? How do I write in a way to best communicate my message? And so I got really down deep into writing, copywriting, storytelling, that kind of thing. Um, But then it's also about trying things. And so I have this framework I like to call uh, the hourglass method, right? So it's um, first you explore, then you refine, and then you diversify. So before you know, before you can work on anything great, you first have to know what you're curious about, what you're interested in. And the only way to know that is to try a bunch of things. So the first thing I'd say is just try things, explore things, you know, start a drop shipping store, sell shoes online, right? Uh, start a Twitter account, right? Just try a bunch of different things, see which you're more naturally interested in, maybe things you're more naturally good at than the average person. Um, and then refine, get really good about that, at that one thing, um, go all in, do great work, and then diversify, you know? Um, so I resonate a lot with um, Daniel Vassalo's a portfolio of small bets, where it's like, once you get really good at a specific thing, then it's about diversifying and making sure you're, you get all your bases covered. And so that's how I think about it for a young person is explore, refine, and then diversify. I, I really couldn't agree with you more. Um, I think it's super important for people to go out and take that risk go out and try something new. Um, You will see life differently. Make your first dollar online. And I promise you, you will view things from such a different lens. And then even in college, like you're you're, you're headed to college. So here's a tip that I don't need to offer you because you're already doing it. But I never got like I was always a B student. I was never very interested in school. Like I didn't want to put the effort needed to do anything better than B's and C's because I just wasn't interested. Um, and that was always a struggle, played sports all the way through college, like stopped at the first year of college. And I started my first business and I started to actually realize that I was becoming more engaged in school because some of the things that I was doing in my business were things I was learning in my marketing classes or things I was learning in my finance classes. So all of a sudden I just became way more engaged in school and started to get so much more out of my schooling experience. And Mm -hmm. I can attribute all of that to the fact that I had a business because When I was a junior, I was taking these 5,000 or 4,000 level marketing classes and I was going to the professor and I was like, hey, like what you just taught yesterday added X to my bottom line at my business. Like it's it worked amazing. What what is next week's class on? And then we'd go Mm -hmm. to next week's class and I would be like, this is bogus. Like it doesn't work like no results. And that was applicable in my marketing classes, in my management classes, because I had employees at some of my companies that was applicable in my finance classes when I was learning how to do my books and run my business from a finance standpoint. And that's why I always like challenge any friends or family or anybody I come across that's a younger, like go start a business. And it doesn't need to be like, (laughs) doesn't need to be like this large scale operation with 30 employees making a hundred thousand a month like you could go start a little hobby selling cookies or anything that you and college will become so much more applicable to you and you'll get more out of it so that's i i couldn't agree more with your point and that's like me adding some more context to the bigger picture is like go start a business because you will get so much more out of your education in college specifically because of the ability to relate what you're doing in your business to what you're learning in school and it's going to make you such a better person so i absolutely love that let's talk about the new newsletter you launched um the newsletter nerd 
This is super exciting. Um, I know in your bio, it says building a portfolio of newsletters to six figures. Um, give us a little bit about the newsletter nerd, and then let's talk more about the bigger picture here and your newsletter business. Yeah, for sure. So I started the newsletter nerd about four or five days ago, um, and it was really born to scratch my own itch. So for a selfish reason, um, because of my internship and at working at Beehive, the newsletter platform, I've learned a lot about newsletters in general, like how to grow a newsletter, how to write persuasively, um, different audience analytics, how to grow a newsletter. When I get obsessed about a topic, like the number one thing I want to do is just talk about it, right? Write about it, share it. Um, and so the newsletter nerd is my way of not just documenting what I'm learning, but also documenting how do you start a business or a newsletter from zero and go to, you know, 10,000 plus. And so uh, the newsletter nerd is three short examples of different newsletter, like different things the top newsletters are doing. Um, two growth tips that I'm applying to my own newsletter. Um, so I'll be running different experiments on different growth channels like Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit, paid channels, all that. Um, and then one favorite tweet. And so every week I'll be sharing a three, two, one format of everything newsletters. Dude, I'm, I'm going to be a subscriber. <laughs> I think I could definitely use those tips that you're mentioning. So I'm really excited. Um, super excited for you that you just launched this new journey. I know when this episode comes out, it'll probably be a few weeks, not a few days. So I'm excited for people listening to the episode like that newsletter is going to be linked in the bottom. Go check it out. Go subscribe. Like there's going to be value that Jay's going to be able to drop for all of you. So I'm really excited for you from that perspective. Let's dig into taking a newsletter portfolio to six figures. How many newsletters do you want in the portfolio? What topics do you think are the most valuable to talk about? Give us some insight into that. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a number of newsletters, but the way I see newsletters. Um, so Sean Perry had this idea that um, an online audience is like a stem cell, right? It can transform into different things. Um, I would argue a newsletter audience is the stem cell because, you know, social media audiences are uh, you know, they're different. They're kind of volatile. You don't exactly know what if you get banned, whatever. We've all seen what just happened to Twitter with threads, right? Um, there's mm -hmm. obviously some battling going on. And so I think the greatest insurance is to build a newsletter. And I think yep. because the market is evolving and people's awareness levels are rising, people are going to start uh, being aware of why a newsletter is so important. But the way I see newsletter is as a stem cell where you can make money through the newsletter. Yes but it's also spinning different businesses on top of that. Um, so for example, um, we can take Sahil Wu, right? He has a really large newsletter. He makes money through sponsorships, through ads, through partnerships, through affiliates, but then he also has different businesses on the back end, right? He has a fund, he probably has a bunch of different agencies. Um, he probably does some consultant work. The newsletter is just like the first step to get to the next step. And it's it's your hub to then spin off to different businesses, if that makes sense. So like a lot of people like Alex from Ozzy right now, but you know, Alex spends 70K a month for creating content, but he doesn't make any money off of the content itself. It's because he's driving people to acquisition.com, which is his investment portfolio. So it's it's playing different and larger games um, like another person, for example, like I'm, I'm super down into this, uh, creator capitalist route is Julian Shapiro, right? He'll, he'll go in the dark for three months and then release a huge start, like a huge handbook about startups, writing well, all these different things, but he gives them out for free because he's attracting the type of people that he can then invest in. And so I think it's just playing a larger game is, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, no, that's. I, I had seen both of those examples and I thought they were super interesting. I heard Alex Ramosi saying he's spending 70K on content and he's not making a dollar back. But I agree, it's it's about the bigger picture. Like so many people are short-sighted and like need results now or need to see results now and are not interested in playing the five, six, seven months out game or even five, six, seven years out game. And I think that's like really sad because you put you leave a lot on the table um, I'm in sales and the product that I sell typically has longer sales cycle and is a little bit harder to adopt. 
Um, and my manager the other day was like, hey, I'm investing in you and I like you because you have one interesting trait that most people don't, especially in sales, is that every move that you've made over the last six weeks in this new role compared to some of my sellers who have been in, in a job like this at this company for 15 years and you've been here nine months, is that I see all your moves are calculated. I see you're setting up all of these interactions, transactions, deals, just to set you up for five, six, seven, eight months down the road instead of pushing them to close now or trying to get business now. And I have always been somebody who, when you can step back and look at the bigger picture, like, man, you'll see so much more <laughs> than you would if you were just trying to make that quick impulse decision. And I think the first time that happened to me where I was like about to make an impulse decision and I kind of stopped myself and I stood back and then I saw the other decision that was clearly a better option. And I did that and it worked out great. I was like, whoa, <laughs> have I just been like impulse doing things for so long that I'm just numb to like, the fact that I wouldn't even look at what's option B or C or D. And I think that's like super important is to play the long game. Like don't do things with the intent to get instant gratification. Like you will most likely fail or you will, you will like make yourself fail because you'll be down on the fact that you haven't blown up. And I think staying on Alex Hermosi is a great example where he built his YouTube channel and I think he had, I think he only had like a couple hundred subscribers in the first nine months of the channel. And then from nine, from month nine to 10, he got 65,000 subscribers. So it's like, and it's like that meme, like that where there's two people like one above the other and they have pickaxes and they're just going. Mm -hmm. And one guy's probably got like three days worth of digging left to a whole wall of diamonds. And the other guy is headed back where he needed just an inch left, but he quit because it had taken too long. So it's like, and obviously be calculated. Like if you're doing something that is no results whatsoever, no structure, no vision, maybe don't just sit around and waste time. But if you've put time into something, you've done the research, you see the potential, don't give up two, three months in, like you might have something great on your hands, see it through. And obviously, like I said, be smart about your money. Don't just throw all your money into something because I'm telling you to do it now, but don't give up on something so easily, which I think is a great example for you too. Like you've, you decided when COVID came that you were going to obsess about creating, be a creator, be online. You said, I'm going to build a great network. And like, now we're here on a podcast two and a half, three years later, and you've accomplished all of those things. And you've done no, during this episode, you haven't been like, I did it, I made it. Like it's only been like, and this is what I'm doing next. And this is what's coming next. And this is what I'm working on next. So I'm like, man, really kudos to you, dude, for being so driven and like so self-aware on everything going on and continuing to follow your passions and the trends. Um, you're, 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 you're really doing amazing. I want to just highlight one more thing here because I know we get a lot of listeners who are on Twitter trying to get their Twitter going. You mentioned persuasive writing. I think that's one of the hardest skills to learn is how to articulate your message to the audience that you want. What are some tips and tricks and hacks that you've kind of come across to make you a better writer, to improve your writing and to help anybody listening who wants to hit an audience? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I would say to learn any skill, um, it's two things. You need reps and you need a tight feedback loop, right? And so in the beginning, it's all about quantity, right? I used to write 10 plus tweets a day on Twitter, just putting in the volume. Um, but then it's also iteration where it's not just volume, but it's also getting better with each tweet, with each piece of writing. And then the second thing I'd say for writing is there's two parts of writing. There's the structure, so how you how you write, but then there's also the thinking, so the thinking behind the writing. And I think a lot of times we stress too much about the structure um, and not enough about the thinking, right? You can find how you write, the structures, the frameworks, the, the templates anywhere on the internet, right? Just search copywriting, you'll find different formulas, but it's about 
to me, it's about the thinking. Because when you become a clear thinker, you write more clearly. And obviously, it's a loop, right? The more you write, the clearer you think. Um, but for structure, it's doing copy work, where I would, you know, read three foundational books, and find three writers that you admire, and then just hand copy、um, their writing. And one, you subconsciously pick up on the structure, how they write, the rhythm, the flow, all that. But then you kind of zoom out and you say, all right, how? What is the big picture here? Because、um, the best writing happens like away from the computer, like not on the page.、Um, so Ryan Holiday has this thing where it's like all success is a lagging indicator. And so when when I'm writing and I'm in the flow and it seems effortless. That's just an indicator that I've done the work ahead of time. I've put in the research. I've gone on walks and thought about and and mulled over an idea. And now I'm ready to write. I've I've stood up to live, so now I can sit down to write.、Um, and I think a lot of people try and study the structures without having something like worth saying. And and that kind of sounds it, it's a mix of doing stuff, but then also、um, learning how to write in a persuasive way. Again, I think that's just a spot-on answer. Like, I love the "I stand up to live and I sit down to write." Like, that's super cool quote there, and and I agree. Like, no matter how pretty and amazing you you present what you've written, if there's no value behind it, if it's empty, what's the point of reading it? And if I do read it, I'm probably just gonna write you off right there because you got me with the way it looked, and then you didn't deliver me any value. And I think that's like the scariest part about social media is that man, people are very quick to leave you or not pay attention to you or write you off. So like, you've got to be really crisp on the messaging and what you deliver. And I think that's something that even I struggle with. Like, it's hard to like, it's it's hard. I record three to five episodes a week. I have an editing team that goes through and clips the videos and edits the videos. But then I post them all. I make all my tweets on my social, the company's social. I write our newsletter. I write our blog post. Like, it's tough, man, to keep up with all of this stuff. And it's so easy to get lost in the like, all right, like I'll just AI generate a few tweets for the week and schedule them out and post them. But it's like when I go back and look, and I'm like, man, like. My AI tweet or my auto-generated tweet got a hundred impressions, but the two tweets around a hundred impressions, but the two tweets that I put time into got three hundred and four hundred. It's like the results are telling you right there. You need to just put in the extra work.、Um, I just think it's tough sometimes for people, but I mean, dude, this has been an amazing conversation, super inspiring. I think I myself have gotten so many good nuggets out of this, like that I'm gonna take notes on after the show and start to implement into my business. So I thank you for that, and I'm sure there's people listening right now that are thanking you through the phone for all of these amazing,、um, all this amazing advice that you're giving at such a young age. It's just extremely impressive.、Um, so, dude, keep crushing it. I end every episode with the same question, and I'm really excited to hear your response for it. And that question is. Jay, what are you excited about in the near future? Yeah, that's a great question to end with.、Um, I'm excited about this,、uh, the newsletter nerd newsletter. I- I'm really bullish on the newsletter space in general, and I think there's a gap in the market that I can fill with a build in public style newsletter. Dude, I'm super excited for it. I'm gonna be subscribing right after this episode. I'm looking forward to following you on your journey. Um, I'm looking forward to this connection right here and 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 staying close. I'm really bullish on you and and what you have to offer to the world over the next few years and forward.、Um, so I'm super excited for you and your journey.、Uh, where can people follow you? Where can people interact with you? I want anybody who's listening and who has stuck around for this whole episode to be able to go meet you, interact with you, gain some value.、Um, where 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 would you suggest that? Yeah, so I'm most active on Twitter,、um, J Yang Inspires. So J A Y Y A N G Inspires,、um, and then obviously through my profile you can go on my newsletter.、Um, I have two newsletters right now: the Newsletter Nerd that I just started, and the Sunday Storypreneur, where every Sunday I just document three things I'm learning as I'm building these businesses and learning these skills.、Um, so if you want to keep stay updated on my journey,、um, the newsletter is the best place. Dude, awesome. Jay, it has been an absolute pleasure. Super excited for this episode to come out, and I know people are gonna love it.、Um, thank you again. I can't say it enough. Thank you again for coming on the show, making some time for this. This episode is 
I know it's going to be one of the best ones we have. Um, so again, can't wait to stay connected and I wish you the best, man. Thanks for having me on.